Hi guys, this video is about how you can correct an increased lumbar lordosis or an increased lumbar spine. I'm first going to discuss about why it happens, the causes behind it, because that can help you with a solution to it. And then I'll show you some exercises you can do to correct it. Now, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Mareka. I'm the physiotherapist from sportsinjuryphysio.com, where you can get online physiotherapy assessment as well as treatment for your injuries. Okay, so why do we get to increase all doses and what do I mean with that? So when you look at the spine, it has a natural curve that goes in a little bit in the lower back, that's all the lordosis, and it curves out in the upper back a slight kyphosis. Now for some people, this is hyperextended, so you get an increased curve. It is normal that you um, a curve of about two to five degrees tilt in the pelvis is quite normal, but you don't really want more than that. So how you can see what yours is, is if you find the knobbly bit at the front of your um, pelvis, so I don't know if you can see, if I can even show it, but mine would be there. I can feel my knobbly bit on my pelvis there. Then the other point is at the back of the pelvis where you get your dimples. So kind of the dimples there, I can feel mine there. So if you look at the mirror side on, standing upright, you want to look at the angle between those two. I'm going to bring my shirt down so you can see my fingers better on it. There we go. So that's my one knobbly bit. That's the other knobbly bit. And you can see mine slightly tilted forward, but not that much. An increase your doses would be when there's a big angle there. So you can see how it now tilts quite severely. You can also get the opposite. You can get where it's too straight and the lower back is too flat. You can see it's now straight or even slightly tilted back. So what we're looking for is a slight tilt there. Now remember, we're all different, so you can't, there's not a perfect thing to work towards, but if you feel yours is too much, your curve is way too much, then these exercises may be for you. But don't get paranoid about it. An increased curve doesn't necessarily lead to back pain, but it can be part of it if you've got an excessive one. So what causes it? One of the big causes that I see in athletes, and especially guys who does a lot of strength training with their thighs, is that the hip flexors and the quads become so tight that they pull it forwards. Because you've got to remember, the quads attaches to the front of the pelvis, as well as the hip flexors attaches to the front of the pelvis and femur. So when that's tight, it will pull your pelvis forwards. That's by far the most common reason for it. Secondly, it can be due to injury. So for instance, if you've had disc injuries or stuff, the shape of your spine can literally change. And with those cases, there's a little bit of change you can, um, or change you will see with the exercises, but it may not be as big as if it's just pure muscle tightness that's stopping the movement. It may be your natural curve, so it may be your, how your anatomy is, um, but I will always give it a go with the exercises first and see how that changes it. I feel I'm forgetting something here. Let me just quickly have a look. Oh yeah, of course, the easiest one is it could just be a habit. So a lot of us, when we stand, like to go into this posture and stand like that. And that is because that takes no energy whatsoever to stand. So watch out, if that's your habit of standing like that, get into the habit of bringing those hips under your shoulders and standing up straight. Okay, so how do we correct it? There are two part, three parts to it actually. One. You first go tell your brain where you want it to be. So you've got to get used to how do I actually move my pelvis because it all, it's not about moving the spine. We're going to use the pelvis to correct the spine because if you move the pelvis, it automatically affect, affects the back. The second is we've got to make sure that we've got enough flexibility because if we really tighten the muscles at the front here, it doesn't matter how much you try to practice that, it just won't let go. And then thirdly, you've got to strengthen the muscles up so that they actually keep you in that position. So let's start at the start. Let's teach you pelvic movements and dissociation. I find one of the easiest places to start is with a ball. Now, I've got a really cheap ball here, and I'm traveling at the moment, so I have to inflate it by mouth, which means it's really soft. Ideally, let me just bring this down so you can see me better. Ideally, you would want a ball that gets a better angle for you, so you can see mine's a bit too low because I'm getting quite a flex there. I would have wanted to be sitting there. But it doesn't matter, it'll work. So what you do is you first of all, imagine you've got spotlights on your bum and you just stick your bum out to the back. So that's increasing the curve. But then you pull your tummy muscles in 
and you curl it under you. So we're doing a curl like that and like that. So you can practice that, just getting the pelvis moving. Now, watch out. Often when I get people to do this, what they'll do is they'll do that. This bit has to stay still. I'm just moving my pelvis. Okay, curling it under me, sticking my bum out. So spotlight's back. Imagine to get this front curl, it can be useful if you think you've got a tail coming between your legs and you're pulling on your tail to curve back. Okay, so you're pulling on your tail to get it under you. While you're there, you may as well work on getting to know how it feels to turn your, take your pelvis from side to side. And just practice that a bit. Get used to how it moves. Then we've got to take it onto the floor. Okay, so, cat cattle, everybody knows that one. Or if you've done yoga or pilates, you will. So, natural curve is that slight little bend in the spine, as you can see there. So, there's a little bit of a bow. Now, if you have an increased curve, you may look something like that, okay? And the opposite of that would be there. So what I want you to do is don't just go and start the movement from anywhere. So don't just do that and that. I want you to move sequentially. So what you're going to do is you're going to use your tummy muscles. And we're going to start from moving from there only. And you're going to stick your bum up to the ceiling and then let the rest of the spine follow through. Now we're going to start moving again from there. And you're going to tuck your tail between your legs and then the rest of the spine moves. So we're sticking the bum out, and only the bum at this point, and then following with the rest. And now tuck your tail, and I'm, I'm managing this tail tuck by tightening up my tummy muscles, so I'm using my tummy muscles to slowly do that. And then I'm sticking my bum out, then you go in. Now, if you struggle with this, and you feel it's impossible, just keep working at it. It's really difficult if you've never done this before, to get it to move bit by bit. But the more you do it, the better you'll get at it. And it's really useful if you can see yourself in a mirror. Now, if you don't have a mirror to look at, I've just realized the phone works really well. So put it on video, put it on selfie, and you can actually see yourself do it. So you can do it that way as well. So that's a nice way to just get an idea of how do I move my spine. Then we go into the next exercise. So I wonder if I bring it up a bit and get you to see me from the top. Bit more like that. Okay, so now you're on your back and hopefully you've got a softer surface than I have but I don't have a mat with me at the moment. So if you've got a very big curve in your spine you may be able to slide your hand fully in under there. So what we want to do is I want to teach you how to use your tummy muscles to flatten your back into the floor. Okay, so let me show you without my shirt that you can see what I'm doing there. So that's an increased curve at the moment you want to get it to be flat. But now, do not push through your heels. Your feet should not be pushing. It should be your tummy muscles doing the job. So what you do is you tighten up your tummy muscles and you pull your pelvis back. Very hard work from the tummy to get it flat in there. At this point, check. Are you pushing through your heels? Stop pushing through your heels. Don't push through your legs. They've got to be relaxed. You should be doing it all with your tummy muscles. Also, watch out. I don't want you using these guys too much, the upper ones, it's got to be the lower ones. So don't end up doing that, that you lift this bit up, okay? This has got to stay flat, it's this bit that moves. That comes towards here, not the opposite, which is that, okay? So, your exercise is going to be, you bring it back into the floor, using your tummy muscles, and once it's there, you count. And you want to be relaxed in your neck, Relaxed in the shoulder blades, so your shoulder stays back, feet are relaxed, and you count till 10 while you breathe normally. And relax. And then you repeat that. So you keep it in there, and you count, check everything's relaxed, and just hold it. It's a lot of things to think about, so don't worry if you don't get it perfect the first time you do it. Every time you do it, you'll become more familiar with the exercise, and you'll be able to focus on little bits. But what you're essentially looking for is to be able to use your lower tummy muscles to bring that flat into the floor and have this bit totally relaxed, this bit totally relaxed. Okay. Now, from there, you want to see, so this 
is yes, a movement exercise, but it's also starting to strengthen um, the tummy muscles. I've just gone bright red on my face because it's so hot in this place and I had to close all the windows to get the noise out. So ignore the tomato face for now. Um, so you do that again, bring your back flat into the floor, make sure it's not the upper bit working, it's the lower bit. And then see, can you slide your legs slowly down without allowing your back to pop up? If you find you can do it only to there and then it wants to move, that's where you work it to and then you bring it back up and do the same thing for the other side, okay? But as soon as you feel it pop up, that means you've lost it and you've got to come back and readjust. Eventually, you may be able to get your foot fully flat without this lifting up, like I'm doing there. But it may take quite a long time to get there depending on how tight you are and how weak your tummy muscles are. So let me walk you through this from the start. You start off by using your lower tummy muscles to squish your back into the floor. That's where it stays. You can even have a hand there if you want to make sure it stays there. Then you slowly start sliding your leg down. It's not allowed to lift. If you feel it gets to the point where it's going to want to lift, hold it and bring it back. Do not allow it to lift, especially on the back, because sometimes people forget and they just let it go and bring it back. You've got to keep it there when you bring it back. And you repeat it on both sides. I would say 10 times on each side, done three sets, so 30 in total is a good place to start with. Now, we're starting to work on strength there, but you've also got to work on flexibility in the hip flexors, because remember, if your quads are really tight, it's going to keep on pulling you forwards. So let me just grab a cushion with you for my knee, because otherwise it's going to hurt. Oh. All right. My favorite hip flexor stretch. Now I'm going to keep the phone in this position, even though you won't be able to see my head, which to be honest, seeing as how red my face is, I'm quite happy about that. <laughs> but it's so that you can see the full extent of what I'm doing with my hips. So we're going to stretch this front of thigh. You go into this position, so nice large lunge forward with the other leg, and you'll notice I've got a wall here because you want to hold on to something. It's not a balance exercise. Now, you're going to lean forwards to feel a stretch over the front. If I allow my pelvis to just do that, can you see that I'm actually not getting a stretch there because I'm just letting my pelvis go? So what you're going to do first is use your tummy muscles to bring your pelvis back. Now you lean forwards until you feel a stretch at the front. You may not be able to go that far, but actually you're getting a better stretch. Look at the difference. If I allow my pelvis to go forwards, then I can immediately go further, but I also don't feel a stretch there. So you've got to keep your pelvis back and then lean forwards. And you keep it at that point. Looking for about 30 seconds times three each side, but you can also just work into it. There's plenty of different ways to stretch. And remember, it may not even be right for you, so be careful that you don't injure yourself. It's got to be pain-free. Nothing, none of these exercises should cause pain. It's okay to feel a stretchy sensation, but it shouldn't be pain and shouldn't make anything hurt afterwards. Now, once you've stretched the front of the hip thigh out three times 30 seconds, you then want to catch your foot as well if you can. And again, you can see I immediately want to go like that with my hip moving back, and that's because it's a bit tight at the front. So what you do is you make sure that hip comes forwards and you pull your tummy muscles in. So not allowing it to do that, tummy in so pelvis comes back and you bring it forwards. And I can't take it higher than that, that's where it's stretching, so I'll just keep it there. It's got to be a gentle stretch. If you can't actually reach your foot, place a towel around it and pull it up with a towel. Um, I don't have one to demonstrate that now. But yes, so you just, you would loop the towel or the band around the foot and pull on that until you've got enough flexibility to actually be able to catch your foot. Okay, so that's my favorite one for stretching the hip flexors, but there are plenty of different ones. And if you're really, really, really tight, you may have to start with other ones that's not that intense and move up to this one. Please, you can overstretch, so don't go injuring yourself. So now, up until now, we've worked on figuring out how to move the pelvis and the spine. I've shown you an exercise that you can start strengthening the tummy muscles with the pelvis um, in a better position where the spine is slightly more neutral. Um, on that point, by the way, I worked it in an imprint 
in that spinal exercise because I find that's easier at the beginning. Eventually you want to use it just in a normal curve. Um, and now we've also worked on flexibility, but now you've got to figure out how you actually correct your pelvis while standing. Um, so one of the first exercises I start people off with is quite a simple one. Let me run through this. You have to progress it to more specific ones after a while as you get better with it, but it's a good one to start this. So what you do is you want to check, I wonder if we're just going to do it standing. Yeah, we'll do it down there. So again, in front of the mirror, get your point there where you can feel your um, knobbly bit at the back is, knobbly bit at the front. And I'm going to over exit or over extend mine for now. And then bend your knees. Now correct that pelvis, so tilt it back so it's more straight. And then keep your tummy muscles in and keep that pelvis in that position and slowly, slowly straighten your legs. Now, you may find what happens if you're really tight. As you go up, it all goes back to normal because you can't keep it there. And that's often when this bit is really tight. But just practice it. So you bend the knees to get the tension off the hip flexors. So now the tightness should be less. You correct your pelvis. So I'm showing you with my hands, but I'm not pushing it back with my hands. I'm using my tummy muscles to do that. I'm just showing it for you, to you. So if your pelvis was there, correct it to there, and then keep it, by keeping your tummy muscles in, make sure the pelvis doesn't shift, and straighten your legs out. And if you feel you can only go halfway at the beginning, that's okay, practice that. The better you get at it, or the more you practice, the better you'll get at it. You could also pinch your bum a bit to do that, but I don't want you to get into the habit of walking with a pinched bum the whole time. So rather use your tummy muscles to get that movement right, okay. And that's it, that's how you teach yourself to do it in standing. You will move on to doing it on one leg as well and doing it with weights and stuff. Um, but you have to nail the simple exercises first before you can go on to these. Now remember, if you need any help with specific injuries or anything like that, or you want a specific set of exercises for you, you're welcome to consult me via video call. You can find the details of my, of my website in the description of this video. But let me know if you've got any questions. Take care.